What's going on, everybody? It's Daryl D. Freda here, and I have my lovely panel here for the Let's Talk About It podcast episode. Today's topic is marketing in the digital age, and I have uh, some great people here that are going to give us some expert advice on how to market your business. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to go around the panel, and everyone's going to um, introduce yourself, pretty much just say your name, company, title, and just uh, where you're from. And then we'll go pretty much in order. Uh, Justin, Dan, Tony, Tyrone, Robert, and Alexia. Sounds good? Sounds good. Good. <clears throat> All right. So I guess I'll go first. Um, name's Justin Franklin from TRO, also known as Targeted Revenue Opportunities. Uh, we are located out of Kansas City, and I am the main marketing strategist. I'll go next. I'm Tony Abrera. I am from TNT Consulting. I am the founder. Where are you from? I'm from Boca Raton, Florida. Cool, cool. Oh, wow. Who we got next? Go ahead, Robert. Hey, this is uh, Robert Helfst from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, I am the content and digital marketing coordinator for FileWave. Uh, we're an international software company, but I also uh, freelance as a content marketing consultant on the side. Nice. nice. Hey, this is uh, Tyrone Webb Jr. coming in from Atlanta, Georgia. I have some experience. I work for SAP as an enterprise software company, about 95,000 employees. Spent about four years in product marketing and then also have my um, small startup for a marketing business for entrepreneurs. And um, so, yeah, I have a few experience in marketing. Thank you for having me. Great. I think we got Dan next. You bet. Thanks, Daryl. Thank you guys for uh, putting this together. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Dan Young. I'm a, actually a naturopathic uh, clinician here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, we started our clinic uh, in a little room not much bigger than a closet uh, in 1998. And today we, we get into, uh, we get to serve over 6,000 office visits a year. People come to us from all over the world. So it's been an amazing journey. And so I look forward to getting uh, all kinds of tips from you wonderful experts on how to do better than I've done in the last 20 years. <laughs> hey, this is, that's the spirit, man. That's what I want to hear. And uh, <laughs> let's see ya. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Alexia Hernandez. I'm in between jobs right now. Um, I just left um, a global social media role with um, a payments company called Verifone. Before that, I worked for the Home Depot on their employment marketing team for five years. Um, and before that, I was an agency. So on Monday, I'm actually going back into the agency world with a startup, and I'll be responsible for managing their social and digital marketing. Um, here in Atlanta, but I'm originally from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Nice, nice. Great. I didn't miss anything. <laughs> cool, cool. So we're going to jump right into the conversation. So glad to have everyone here for the hashtag. Let's talk about a conversation, marketing in the digital age. So my first question, and like I said, this is a free-flowing conversation. You can jump in as you see fit, uh, is going to be what are the current trends right now in marketing? You know, marketing is very important, goes hand in hand with any entrepreneur in their business. What are some current trends that, you know, people out there that are trying to market their business, what do they need to know? What's the new stuff? What's the hot thing? What's going to get them those sales? What's going to convert? We need to know right now. Who wants to jump in first? <laughs> hey, it's Tyrone. I can actually go first. Okay. Uh, and, and speaking from just from working in enterprise software and what I'm saying from my clients, right, some of the hot things especially right now is when we're doing video on Instagram or on Facebook live or video on Twitter or anything, the days of that professional crisp video where it has to be perfect with the um, teleprompter, a lot of those days are just gone. So what we're telling our executives, we want the people to see the real you. I think people now in this day and age, things are just so transparent where we want to have executives do video outside while they're walking on their way to the conference or, um, why are they are doing yoga to show people that they're doing different things or when they just get something exciting just to show the people and their audience that it's not all about work and that they have that work-life integration. 
And that tends to really uptick their following, their views, and people seem to pay attention a little bit more as to what they do just around their field. And even for my clients, for my marketing business, the same thing. I have a gentleman, he's doing videos in his car ride, and he adds in the subtitles, and people are just loving the, the authenticity of his video and what he's talking about. And they're not so concerned about the perfect lighting or the perfect sound, but the message that he's conveying to the audience. Well, I will definitely second that. Um, that's big. Authenticity, transparency, um, the real person. That is what is getting the viewership and the engagement. Um, and people want to see the person. Uh, it isn't about, you know, the, the commercialness of a video. It's about the real person. Okay. So you both are saying pretty much we're moving away from the importance of high quality HD and it's really more about the context in terms of, you know, knowing who the person is and, and it being real and relatable. So it's not too much about, you know, the flashiness of it, but kind of the genuineness of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm going to jump in here too. Um, I think it's not even just limited to video about personalization, just brands in general. People want to connect more to people. And then if you can actually personalize your brand, I mean, just look at Twitter. Uh, I don't know if any of you are following any of Wendy's tweets uh, <laughs> recently, whatever. <laughs> but just, uh, you don't see something like that personalization. Arby's is doing a great job too. Um, if you follow them on Facebook, they're doing a lot of very unique um, I think they're doing like cutouts and they're blending in trending topics like video games or cartoons and they're creating that and blending it with making basically characters out of their food or out of their um, like uh, material that they have just to reach a more personal level with a lot of people. And even just working in B2B business, which is what primarily I focus on, we primarily work and create deals just because we know somebody and because we see them personally on LinkedIn or we met them at a marketing event. And even if their company can do exactly what we want to do, we want to make sure that they have a personal relationship with them first before we're really going to move forward. And we've just seen that just throughout the industry, really. Yeah. <clears throat> relationship is huge. People will do business with people they know, like, and trust. Absolutely. Yeah. The importance. Mm -hmm. Oh. Sorry. No, it's fine. Sorry, Robert. If, if I'm hearing this properly, first of all, it sounds like some of you have viewed some of my Facebook lives, so you know that they're not <laughs> professional and, and uh, charismatic. And uh, uh, so, I, so now I really feel strongly like I'm on point with, with the content that we're uh, that we're pumping out. And uh, the other thing is, it sounds like you know businesses like entertaining, right? There's some entertainment value along with getting across a meaningful message about a product or service, if I'm hearing properly here. Yeah, 100%. I think uh, it was cool you said something about Twitter and um, Arby's, because uh, once you said that, it reminded me of the Twitter beefs that like uh, Wendy's was having a couple of months ago. And it's like, they're, they're bringing um, attention to themselves by, you know, having these interesting, funny, interesting and um, uh, entertaining ways to pretty much get awareness about their brand. And it's like, it's not traditional. Mm -hmm. But it works because now Wendy's is on your mind because they made you laugh. So it's like, even though they're not marketing any of their products, just the way that they are, you know, getting your attention, it's allowing them to, you know, get get you in, in the door. Because eventually when you drive past, you're like, oh, I'm hungry. What am I going to eat? Oh, then Wendy's is the first thing on your mind. So then you go there because so like subconsciously so you're in their head. And because that's they are marketing their products. That's marketing. Oh yeah, indirectly in, in a <laughs> so It's cool how um, you mentioned that. I, I think that's definitely one of the, the big trends is like kind of going with what's um, like trending and, and what's kind of on the top of the mind of, of, of the users. That's great. Anyone else want to add on to that current market trends or um, new ways that people should be marketing their business? Yeah, I'll jump in for a minute. Um, I think that today's customers have become really discerning and people know when they're being marketed to. And so that's why we're seeing this trend in the importance of authenticity and connection and uh, telling a story that's really impactful. 
uh, if you're adding value in some way, whether that is, you know, connecting with people and having an actual conversation on LinkedIn instead of just spamming signup links, yeah. or yeah. if you're putting out case studies that actually help people understand how they can apply your services to their own business in life, that's when the real magic happens and you start converting those into leads. Definitely, definitely. When you build those personal I even think um, Gary Vee even says he hits people with a three punch. So he'll call out uh, free content, free content, free content. And with the third one, he gets them with like a sale just to get them out of the way. And it's been really effective for him. That's right. Your nurture has to be filled up with those lost leaders so that you're creating value before you ask anything of them. You always want to give first before you do the ask. Yeah. Absolutely. I was actually listening to Gary Vee this morning. Um, and he was talking about how you should sell when you're selling and market when you're marketing. And don't blur the lines. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's okay to sell your products and it's okay to market your products. But when you're masking your marketing or you're masking your giving as, as selling, that's when it's an issue. And to add that level of trust within your people that you're marketing to, you want to make sure that the lines aren't blurred and just be very direct. Like when you're selling, sell. When you're marketing and you're just trying to build a brand or give value, give value. And kind of don't like uh, try to, you know, heist them into getting to buy your products, you know, just be, you know, be honest and, and, and work toward building that relationship because the relationship is going to work for the long run. And even if you don't get that sale in that moment, you might develop a relationship that's going to turn into a long-term customer, which is much more important in terms of the ROI of that one individual, because you rather get the long-term sale as opposed to that one transaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, uh, in Oh, go ahead, Tony. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I was just going to jump in because you said ROI, and that's kind of uh, an area that kind of always makes me jump up. <laughs> this is very different from the old days of ROI, where ROI meant immediate dollars in your hand. The, these are the days of marketing that it's a longer process, and ROI might not be as easily tracked. Um, it, it's a content, it's a relationship, you know, giving out your content, building the relationship. But the ROI at the end is going to be much larger. It's a longer uh, ramp, a uh, longer takeoff. But once you get there, the ROI is going to be huge. Oh. And I think patience is the number one key to entrepreneurship in the beginning. And if you don't understand that, that is what causes a lot of people to bail out early. Exactly. And mm -hmm. Alexa, yeah. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. This is uh, Tyrone and just wanted to chime in because even for what the ROI looks like on a weekly basis for my clients or just in general, right? We are looking at how many tweets you put out and how many followers you gained and how many blog views you have and video views. and that's the new ROI, or maybe it's not new, right? Maybe it's the, the, the evolution of the newspaper hits are now in the digital age, and it's just transformed to look in this new way. But you're right, the ROI, even when we give our reports to just our executives, right? We're looking at our social media. That's a big component of our marketing that we look at, and those numbers are so important. And you're right, it is the patience, because just that market to sell, for anyone that's being an entrepreneur that's looking to build up their business, it's going to take some time. And sometimes things do happen overnight. But when you're doing that market to sell, it is patience is key. That's really important. Yeah. You know, Daryl, as a but to add to come in here real quick, if oh. I could, from a, yeah. from a practitioner standpoint, from a, from a person who's built, you know, a large business. And, and the thing is that we, we kind of got away from the ROI thing. I love what Tony mentioned, because that's kind of a flag for me too. It's like, you know, sometimes that short-term transactional money in the bank versus that long-term relationship. And one of the things we do in our mentorship program, we have clinicians come here from all over the world that, that stay with me for a while and learn how to take what we do back where they go. And we teach them a thing, the difference between ACV and ACV. And what that means is there's an annual client value versus an actual client value. And the annual client value, every practitioner, at least from my, you know, uh, my business area, we know what a client usually is worth per month on an average, right? Or in an annual basis in terms of revenue per client. But if we properly take care of them and nurture that relationship, like what's being mentioned here and, and really alluded to, 
is that there's an actual client value that far exceeds an annual client value. And, and so that's what we really focus on in trying to get people to understand that when you take care of that person and you focus on their needs first and that relationship first and you're serving them first, which has also been touched on, then you're going to not only, you know, if, if a client's worth $100 a month to a practitioner in terms of transactional relationship, which is important, right? There's a piece that, that has to be looked at. But if they're only worth $1,200 a year in, in revenue, let's say, as an individual client, but if they bring you seven more, now it's 7000 a year, you see? So, so that's what we really focus in on as practitioners, at least my little niche in the world, right, is to develop that relationship so that we understand when somebody comes to me the first time, they, the phone rings for the first time, I'm not looking at the annual client value of that phone call, I'm looking at the actual client value, and which is the bigger picture, which forces you to maintain a higher level of communication, um, yeah. credibility, integrity, everything is upregulated in that energy with that client when I focus that way and teach others to do the same. And that's the difference between playing the short-term game and the long-term game. That's and right. A lot of companies are now shifting that focus where they see the benefit and focusing on a long haul as opposed to fo focusing on short-term numbers. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you, when you really focus on the long-term relationships, that's when you set yourself up for longevity in terms of your business. And I know I want to sneak, sneak Alexia in here because I know um, she's going into a startup, correct? That was you're going into? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I wanted to hear some insight. Or what, what are some things that you think are going to be challenging or, or different um, being from uh, a, a larger corporation now moving into a startup in terms of marketing? Because the marketing uh, strategy for a startup is going to be completely different from a well-established business. Oh, yeah. Um, I, the biggest challenge I see is resources. Um, you know, coming from Home Depot and a global company like Verifone, um, resources wasn't the question. <laughs> Um, so I see that as, as, as a challenge and then just getting creative with what I have, um, you know, using free tools that I have at my disposal to help the agent, the startup and, um, and our clients kind of get their social and digital campaigns running to just start proving the ROI behind why we're, you know, why they need to really, you know, change their marketing focus and really start playing in the digital space. I see that as my number one challenge. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up because that's going to segue us into our next question. Um, because when you're in a small corporation or a startup, the funds that you have available is going to be completely different from a, a big enterprise. So what are some ways or what, as actually better, where should the people be spending their marketing dollars um, and tailoring it to entrepreneurship and um, let's say small businesses where should a small business uh, or startup, where should they be spending their money? You know, should they be, I hear a lot of talk about social media, should be spending their dollars on, on Facebook ads or Instagram ads, or should they still, you know, do the traditional uh, TV, not, well, no, no startup is going to do TV, but, <laughs> but like <laughs> print, print or like newspapers, uh, where, where should these startups or, or small businesses be putting their dollars? So, so I'll, Let's go with Robert, and, and Tony, and we got Justin. <laughs> Thanks, Daryl, for helping us sort that one out. Uh, <laughs> as, as far as where a, a, a startup or a small, medium-sized business should be focusing their dollars, I think you've got to meet your customers where they are. So for some people, if it's a more B2B setup, you're going to be wanting to spend more time and effort on uh, LinkedIn. That's probably where your 80-20 is going to slice. If you're doing a B2C, if you are a service, you know, home repairs, installations, things like that, getting on Facebook and cultivating a following, it's a great place to showcase, you know, photos of work you've done, put it out there, find people in your area that you can actually get in touch with. So you've got to go and meet them where they are, tell stories that actually tell the benefit and help build that relationship from the get go. So you definitely are, are, are leaning towards social media, but just pick your lane within social media. Yeah, uh, you don't need to be spread too thin. You've got to focus your efforts where you're actually going to get the value. Um, people who spend a lot of money on display ads and AdWords and LinkedIn ads and Facebook ads, you aren't always seeing the connection with the consumers that you used to. So being focused and narrow is a lot more valuable, I think, because it also helps you pre-qualify and get the people you actually want instead of casting a wide net and getting a lot of people who can drive up your ad costs. Um, that aren't going to convert. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. Great. Tony. I agree. I think you need to know your buyer. Um, and I don't think a lot of people think of that their end user and they really do. And a good way to describe it is, you know, think of your consumer or your buyer as an avatar and where would they be? Are they going to be on Instagram? Are they going to be on Facebook? Are they going to be on LinkedIn? And I, I agree B2B is going to be LinkedIn and, you know, vice Facebook and Instagram are going to be for, you know, the different crowds. Um, I would definitely not spend on, you know, the typical old school advertising. I think that's a waste. And if you don't know, I would spend your money on someone who does know and have them teach you. I think that's really important. Don't waste your money. Spend it on somebody who knows so they can teach you the right place to be. Okay, that's interesting. And I think so what questions would you ask, Tony? I would ask. I would, that person. That's, I, mean, that's... I would try to find out who, you know, what their market is. Like, I think multi level marketing is Facebook still their main um, area, you know, the, that type of arena. Um, I think for the younger generation, they're on Instagram. They're starting to float over to LinkedIn. Uh, B2B is definitely LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, nobody's watching content on TV. They're watching it on, on their phones. Um, <laughs> I'm doing some uh, work in the OTT space, which is very cool, uh, very now. Uh, but when I describe it to people, I say it's the future because a lot of people don't understand it. It's global broadcast networks, um, cloud network based. And, um, you know, that's where, where everyone's going to be. Um, you know, I would put money there. I, I think Justin, you had something as well. Yeah, um, I think um, the most effective because I've worked with social media and at some websites. Like the most effective um, techniques that I found personally, and which I think is really uh, underutilized, is actually email marketing. Personally, mm -hmm. um, just because um, it, it's one of the few platforms where you can use the same metrics, same measuring, same tactics for both an inbound campaign and also an outbound campaign. Um, so, I mean, just looking at, uh, Neil Patel or like HubSpot, I even, I think I posted something last week on my LinkedIn about it. Uh, email marketing, as far as the most effective online tactic for lead generation, most effective online tactic for lead nurturing purposes. And it's also the easiest to set up compared to the other ones. Uh, cause think about it. What do we all used to do? We all used to do, I mean, I used to do, I've done everything. I've done door to door. I've done cold calling. I've done inbound retail. I've done, I, I've literally done everything. And through my own processes using email marketing, that has been more effective than any of the other kind of outbound or inbound lead generation person that I've used. I even think it's even more effective than SEO purposes. Um, just because where is everybody now? They're not looking at their phones. Uh, they might be searching for you and those are the higher markets. They're top 5%, but you still want to get those other like 25, 30% to where they're leaning on the fence about it. You want to get them, right? And the way to get to them is through their inboxes. Because think about it. We all check our own email. We're mm -hmm. all looking at our own inboxes. That's where everybody's going to be. And most likely, unless it's a complete, unless obviously if your tagline is not that great, I'm not going to look at your email. But if you have a, like a relative subject line, you open it and it seems like you make a very, very, very light ask. Don't try and hard sell. Just something where you're trying to build a relationship. Say something like, hey, John, saw you on LinkedIn or we're at the marketing event. Uh, no, so we might have some mutual business interests. I do this. Does it make sense to maybe connect sometime? And mm -hmm. I've personally done that and I found it to be way more effective for me just to get appointments, for me to get customers, for me to just even do brand awareness so people know where I am at that point. It's just very super effective. And just the cost point to do that is a lot lower than traditional, traditional ads or digital ads or social media. So I think that's a very underutilized tool that not a lot of people are using, but if done correctly, it's super effective. I, I'm so glad you brought out those points, Justin, because with email marketing, it's so effective and it's great because you're not reliant on a uh, social media platform's algorithm. I've yep. seen algorithms change so often. Facebook had a big one, LinkedIn even had one a couple of months ago, and it changes your your reach and your impact so, so, so drastically. And it's something that you have no control over. 
But once you have set up a, a well-established email list, those contacts are yours. You reach out to them as often as you want or as you please, and and you get to really market to your audience directly in your own time. So I think that's that, that was a great point. And then to add on to that, you also have test, te text uh, message marketing, which is very underutilized and no one's really doing that at all. And it's so effective because email marketing is somewhat cluttered now. The space is cluttered, it's hard to fight for the attention, but uh -huh. you know, people are, are trying to you know get on, on top of the edge. Text marketing is text a marketing. people, if you get a text message, you're not gonna assume someone's gonna market to you. You're, you're assuming it's gonna be your buddy, your family member or somebody, and then you're gonna open it and you're gonna see it. So yeah. it's like, you gotta figure yeah, out- That just happened to me yesterday. The underutilized attention is, and um, we just gotta keep, you know, using our marketing skills and, and figuring out how can we get people's attention in ways that people aren't currently marketing. I think that's the way to think. Well, well, and I think something else that I'm noticing is not utilized with email marketing is you have all those email lists. And I've noticed in some of the companies that I've worked in, they're not leveraging those lists to generate retargeting campaigns. And that's really easy to do on Facebook, for example. Um, and you don't need to spend a lot of money. Um, I know, you know, my, my experience at Verifone, Verifone is a B2B company. And um, you know, that was one thing we had massive, you know, email lists and we weren't using those to retarget on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We were just sending out these emails and not really, you know, building these, these relationships on social media <laughs> and keeping the brand top of mind. Um, instead, you know, we were spending a lot of money on LinkedIn, but LinkedIn really wasn't proving to be that valuable either. Um, so another thing that I like to tell people is to look at your metrics. Um, LinkedIn was my light, my largest um, audience, um, but it required a lot of money for me to spend to get a couple leads and a couple conversions, whereas I could spend $30 on Twitter or $30 on Facebook, even maybe $200 on Facebook and generate, uh, you know, thousands of dollars in revenue. So that's something else mm -hmm. that, that comes to mind as I'm hearing everybody talking. Yeah. And I wanted to yeah. add on is, you go ahead. Uh, this is Tyrone. I just wanted to add on, you know, social is super important, but something else that I'm noticing in the trend, if you are an entrepreneur, if you have the money in your budget, save for partner marketing, because there's so many events going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, Eventbrite, for example, they send you a list of what's going on every week. There's opportunity to partner with, depending on which line of the industry your business is in, there's just events mm -hmm. happening, especially in Atlanta, left and right. You can partner with some of these organizations partner with another entrepreneur and they'd be able to split that cost of uh, an event or something on social media if you want to do a video or anything and that comes across very effective as well and you'd be able to build on your followers and have something else just that's just building in the background while you're still building your business so if you can combine that with partnerships that's really important as well that I've been saying mm -hmm. yeah. And the beautiful thing is if you're doing all of these things effectively, you've, you're casting the nets on social to get your new people in. You've got a welcome automation nurture campaign set up to lead them through building the relationships, sending them worksheets, giving them important information to really build that relationship from the get go. And then you're going to the events, you're pressing the flesh, you're passing out business cards and you're going to just feed them all in there. And, and one last thing um, I think that's important is without spreading yourself too thin i do it all like i do email marketing because you have to do a little bit of everything and if you set up a good automation you know i particularly use zoho one and i use link match so i can copy a profile off of um linkedin and put it right into my crm and i have their email addresses and their phone numbers and so i can start a campaign and you know once i've built the relationship i've got the buy-in so it's, then you've got your automation and it's like boom 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 so it's just if you you've got to spend the time in the foundational building and once you have that you're good nice so interesting i, I got a question i wanted to follow up with in terms of marketing and how you guys are, are, are putting together your marketing pieces. One, should small businesses and, and entrepreneurs be doing their own marketing or is that something that they should be outsourcing? And if it's something that they're doing themselves, what programs or apps or softwares are you using? 
I think. I think it's a good system. Go ahead, Tony. I was just going to just go back to just because I said um, I, if they don't know what they're doing, I think that they should outsource it if they can afford it um, or learn it, really spend the time, learn it, um, because engagement is really important. Um, and I personally use Zoho because they have Zoho One, which is, allows you to automate your email campaign, your social media, and then you, you personalize, obviously, the ones you want to personalize. Um, and Link Match does the copying. So it, it saves a lot of time. Um, and those are the products I like. And again, it allows me to utilize all the forms of social media, email marketing, et cetera. And I spend my money there. Go ahead. Just to add to that, this is this is Tyrone. I would say do a little bit of both, right? Because when you outsource, one of the key issues that people have when they outsource is that they outsource something that they don't understand. But you should still learn it because you don't want anyone giving you crappy metrics and you think it's something great because you don't understand how the marketing process works. So definitely learn it on your own. And even if you do have the budget to outsource, still learn it. And then figure out the right platform that's best for you and your business because it might not be a Facebook, but it could be YouTube. It could be just LinkedIn and YouTube that works best for you. So you have to really know your business, know your audience, and know the goal that you're trying to get across to your audiences and where your audiences lie on whichever platform. Because it could be email, back to what we were saying earlier. It could be text messages. I mean, I've been getting text messages left and right. Uh, marketing text messages for the election that's coming up in Georgia on November 6th. So there's a lot of different things, but I would definitely say learn it and then either do it yourself or outsource it, but still learn it no matter what, because you are the CEO of your business and no one will care about your business as much as you do. That's a good point, Tyrone. Very good point. I agree. Agreed. It's also, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll go sorry. ahead. If I can jump in, uh, follow up to Tyrone, if that relationship that you've built with someone outside of your business who is running your marketing for you, if that relationship sours and you need to walk away and you don't know the processes in place or how to run them or how to translate it, if you're bringing someone else on board, then you're really up the creek. You've got to rebuild things that have already been built and figure stuff out that you should already know. So you're saving yourself time and protecting yourself from getting too invested in another service that might not carry on with you as your business grows and matures. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. There's a lot of pitfalls. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, as far as me goes, since I'm in marketing, obviously I want people to outsource it. So I make more money. Um, <laughs> but other than that, other than that, I will say, yeah, learning it yourself. It's there's so getting Google certified, getting Google analytics certified is free to do. And Google itself is providing that test for you so you can learn the ins and outs. I've taken it. It's very in-depth, goes over everything, the basics you need to know. Their HubSpot offers certifications that are free to learn. Uh, Moz offers certifications. Anything that you want to learn about SEO, email marketing, Google AdWords, Facebook AdWords, the information is out there. You just have to take the time to really learn it. And then what I will say, though, is take the time to learn it. And then if you try it, still don't understand, I mean, it's free to learn. You might as well try it yourself. And if there's something you're still not quite getting or don't have the time for, then go and outsource it to somebody. But um, I would hate to have somebody spend a lot of money and then realizing the things that they could have done, they could have just learned themselves and it was just a minor tweak that they could have done. Makes sense. Good, good advice. Anyone else have any input on that? Okay. The, the last thing that I would just say is if you're going to put content out there, don't just throw content out and not engage with your followers. That's just a waste of time, money, and effort. Oh, no, definitely. If you're putting out you know, content, actually, first of all, people should, I think all businesses should be putting out some form of content. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's, that's mm -hmm. actually missing um, in terms of, 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 of marketing, just understanding that. It doesn't have to be a full, you know, marketing campaign. You can just have, you know, consistency in terms of uh, regular posts about your about your business or anything like that. 
and it could be in any form. It can be in text. It can be in, in video, just audio, video, you know, the, the sky's the limit. And if you diversify your content in different ways, you can really reach and, and um, engage with your audience in unique ways that, you know, or can build relationships and can build clientele. And uh, I really think um, all businesses should have a content strategy as well as a marketing strategy. Uh, going into my next strat, my next question, what's the difference between branding and marketing? Are they the same? Are they different? What, what, what are some key elements that differentiate them? I want to hear from Dan. I feel like he has some insight on this. Thanks a lot, Daryl. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, I think for me, I mean, I'm old school and I love what, what was said earlier about, you know, going door to door and passing out flyers at the mall. And I mean, that's kind of, you know, doing this for 30 years and building, building some businesses up uh, that have been very successful. And, you know, for me, marketing is, is that, is the, is that gateway into developing the relationship, but the branding is, is really for me in my mind anyways, is the content surrounding the, my reputation, right? Like I, I believe that, you know, success over time is what equals credibility, right? And so the successful side of what I do is maybe that's the branding, but the results over time, maybe that's the marketing, right? And so I, for me, being like a one-man show in a micro business, right? I, I have to be able to wear those, both of those hats, it feels like, right? To make that successful. And, and I think, you know, to answer to, this young lady that's you know doing the startup thing, one of the things that crossed my mind is like the most valuable resource that I can have as a small business, as an entrepreneur, is a customer, right? That is my most valuable resource, right? And so once I've invested the time to educate and to position myself in the minds of what, what the services or products I have to offer and what problems I'm solving for them, once I acquire that customer, then everything becomes about that long-term relationship with that customer. And that's what's going to be, you know, that's my most valuable resource. I, I'll finish with this. I, I was talking with some folks at a business development council a, a couple hours north of Cheyenne here. And, and they're talking about, let's go out and get a loan and let's go out and get, you know, let's secure money and get, you know, funding and, 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 uh, and you know, let's, let's get a grant. And I'm like, why don't we go out and get some customers, right? I mean, yeah. that's, you know, let's just, let's just get some customers and the rest will take care of itself if you take care of them, right? And so... I don't know if I answered your question, Daryl, but in my mind, you know, I'm the, I'm the probably the white hairedest guy in the whole deal here. Um, I think that that's, you know, for me, branding has to do with, you know, positioning in the minds of people what I am about. But marketing is how do I connect in like frictionless connection with yeah. how do you receive that service from you or that product? Would you say that one's more important than the other? For me? No, they got to have both. They go hand in hand. When I'm, a, I'm a one man show, right? I mean, I gotta have both. There's nine people that work in my clinic, and I'm still a one man show. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, this is. Uh, oh, go ahead, Daryl. Sorry. No, I'm just saying thank you, but you can add on now. Yeah, this is Tyrone. I was going to say I look at branding as trust. So your brand is what people see when they want to trust you or trust what you're doing. That's your credibility. And then your market is showing, is informing people or educating people on what your company is about. So you have that trust, then you have that education, which then leads into generating revenue for your business. And right now, this is a great example. We're all building out our, our individual brand and people will now trust us around marketing because of the tips that we're giving. And then now they can look into more insight around our businesses and what we do. And we can educate them on what we do. And then this can actually lead to something more in the future for building relationships for all of us on the phone or for anyone that listens to this podcast. So that's how I, I view brand and marketing. And I don't think one is higher than the other. I think that they're actually pretty equal when we're looking at it in this particular case. Definitely, man. I, I agree. They go hand in hand and you, you need to have both to, to run a successful business. And without that component of marketing and branding, you won't be able to first initiate the customer relationships and then you won't be able to maintain them. So. Would you would it be fair to say for someone like me that's not like super savvy on some of the most recent stuff that branding is my reputation and marketing is how people hear about my reputation? Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. Oh, yeah. Would that, that one. Yeah. I like that. Okay, cool. I'm going to write that one down and I'll give you <laughs> credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. 
Uh, I like to keep these uh, calls short, so we're going to wrap up. But to wrap up, what I would like to do is uh, everyone's going to get an opportunity um, to one, share the last tip or a piece of advice for a small business or entrepreneur that's looking to market their business, just uh, one piece of advice, and then just a part and piece of uh, information of how should we reach you, um, their like social media or uh, website or anything like that, okay? And we can go in order, uh, Tyrone, Tony, Justin, Dan, Robert, Alexia, okay? So Tyrone, you got it. Sure, thank you. Uh, this is Tyrone. Thank you, Daryl, for having me first and foremost again. Thank you, everyone, for joining and being part of this great podcast. The one piece of advice I will leave with in the world of digital, in the world of everything moving so fast, be true to you. Because once you're true to yourself, your business and what your purpose is will all align into that. And what you want to market, what you want to talk about will always be authentic. And how can we reach you? Oh, yes. Uh, so people can reach me on my email and my website. My website is www. TyroneWebJr.com. That's T Y R O N E W E B B J R dot com, or my email, TyroneWebJr at gmail dot com. Perfect, Tony. I think the biggest thing that I'm I'm seeing, and where I think a new startup should focus, is on the gap between the old school of marketing, the direct marketing, and the new marketing. Um, because there's a lot of forms of marketing and things like body language, for example, if you're walking into a, you're marketing yourself in person at a networking event, there's ways to give a handshake that shows that you're in control of the conversation. That's totally subconscious to the, other person, they don't even know you're doing it. Um, you know, the Zig Ziglar's and the Brian Tracy's of the world, that information is still good information. And there's no one in that gap between the old school and the new digital marketing. And you need to, you need to have that hybrid. Um, go out and seek that information because it's going to make you lethal. And that's, really what i think great advice and how can we reach you uh you can reach me at my email which is tony abrera that's t-o-n-i-a-b-r-a-i-r-a at gmail.com or uh find me on linkedin or any of the other social media sites with my name um, my website is under construction Great. Justin? Hey. Uh, yeah, one again, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, it's a great way to end a Friday before we start Saturday and have a really good time. Uh, so that's what I'm <laughs> looking forward to. Um, but uh, my main advice is business is really no longer about building a building like, oh, we're the best company out there for you. We're going to do everything. It's about building a relationship with your customers. So people say they think logically, but realistically, they think emotionally and they justify with logic. So you want to come at your customers, your prospects at an emotional level and a relatable level um, before trying to sell or market to them. And then um, you can reach me. Uh, website is trolead.com. Or you can reach me from my email address, which is jfranklin at troleads.com. Perfect. Dan? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And I really appreciate the, the insight and the, and the sharing that's taking place on this panel. I, uh, you know, I just, I, I just think that there's no, there's no substitute for the basics, right? I mean, Tony touched on it. Old and new school can, can cohabitate. There's a hybrid that that needs to take place in terms of building brand awareness as well as building your your uh, your marketing awareness about your brand. So um, from a micro standpoint, being an entre entrepreneur since 1984 and, and uh, having been blessed and being lots of different businesses over the years, um, there's always room to grow. I mean, there's always new things to learn, right? There's always, at least for me, I mean, I always be the perpetual student. I think from a from a small business standpoint, if you're an entrepreneur and listen to the podcast and tuning in, just always remain a student. Um, and I think that that's how you're going to perpetuate the success you want in the future. 
Best way to get a hold of me is uh, dyoungctn at gmail.com. And I'd love to hear from you folks. And I'd love to stay connected with all of you. And thank you, Daryl, for uh, putting this together. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. And also, Dan has a podcast, uh, Total Wellness Podcast. Make sure you guys check it out. Robert? I'm going to have to check out that podcast, man. Um, so for an entrepreneur startup who is trying to figure out what they're what they need to do in marketing, so many people look around at all the marketing stack, all the technology, all the different channels, and they get overwhelmed and they get scared. And, you know, there's FOMO. They're afraid they're going to miss out on a lead. There's sunk cost fallacy where if they chase something and they don't get the ROI they're hoping for, they feel like they need to stick with it because they've spent time there. You get need to slow down, pick a lane to go in, commit and do it well, and then adjust. You have to iterate, measure, adjust, decide where the value is, and proceed. If it's great case studies and content, great. If it's social media where you're getting your leads, play in that lane. But pick something and commit fully and do it well. Uh, best way to get a hold of me is uh, probably on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Robert Helfst. Bear with me. It's H-E-L-F-S-T. Or my website is roberthelfst.com. Thank you. And Alexia? Yeah, um, this was actually a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> and at one point, my um, two-year-old walked in and he sat down and was listening. So <laughs> you might have enjoyed it. <laughs> hey, hey, send him my way. I, I'm, I'm teaching a youth about entrepreneurship, so send him my way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that I enjoy about marketing is it's all about playing and testing. Digital and social is moving so fast. Um, I think that's, you know, key I think back to somebody said um, something to the effect of, you know, know your lane and, and get good at it. And I, and I 100% agree with that. And I think, you know, measure as well. Um, look at the data and don't be afraid to fail. <laughs> it, there is some, you know, back to what I said, marketing is all about playing and, and testing. And there's going to be some campaigns that aren't going to be successful, but that's okay. You just change gears and you move on. Um, the best way to reach me is LinkedIn. My name on there is Alexia Hernandez Cargill, A-L-E-X-I-A-H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z-C-A-R-G-A-L. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate all you guys for being on the Urban Entrepreneur Podcast, the hashtag Let's Talk About It show, where we just had a wonderful conversation about marketing in the digital age. This is your host, Daryl D. Freider, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, everybody. You guys were great. I really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, this was fantastic. Thank yeah. you. This Let's do fun. it again. Yeah. <laughs> <Any time. laughs> Definitely. That All, right. All right. Have a nice weekend. Um, Take care. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye-bye.